So a couple of months ago, I had a chance to drop by my local airsoft field to play a few games. Now this field is CQB only, so the field limit is only 330. And needless to say, this kind of reignited that airsoft tech part of me. Now, for the most part, there are two types of airsofters out there. Ones who are obsessed with really high FPS guns, and ones who are obsessed with really high rate of fire. Guess which one of those I am. So my existing gun only did 20 RPS, and quite frankly, it was starting to break down. Well, the external body was anyways. So I told myself, if I could have one gun, what would it be? And after a bit of research, and about 700 bucks later, I came up with this. An ICS CXP, and a ton of batteries. Now the reason being, is that the easiest way to increase RPS is to shove a bigger battery into the gun. Now this is where things sort of fall apart, as a lot of forums are saying, shove higher voltage batteries, while other parts of the forums are saying to shove high amperage batteries. So this test here is pretty much to show what high voltage and high amperage will do to your RPS. I've even gone so far as to build custom battery connectors. One in series, which effectively adds the two voltages of your batteries together, and the other in parallel, which effectively adds the two capacities of the batteries together, which in turn increases your amperage. Now there are a lot of battery test videos here on YouTube, except I find that a lot of them blame their low RPS on a very high voltage battery to being, oh I didn't charge this battery or some other pathetic excuse like that. We'll have none of that here on this channel. All of my batteries for this test are fully charged. 7.4 LiPo. 9-6 Alright, so this part's gonna get really ridiculous. Two 9-6 batteries hooked up in series. Keep this camera rolling in one continuous take that way. Yeah. Mm. Two seven four lipos in series. Two nine point six volts in parallel. Now I did do a lot more tests and threw all my data into the spreadsheet that you're looking at. Now if you read through this you'll notice that there's a lot more at play than just the battery voltages. The motor is actually the biggest limiting factor. Now the reason why I say this is that if you look at the voltages of the batteries used for the JG Red and the Turbo 3000 motor, they never went past 20 RPS despite using a 12 volt on the JG Red. It didn't respond any faster compared to the 11.1. Now I think this is because this is what this motor is capable of. But if you look at the Lonex A1 motor using the 12 volt and 11.1, there's a significant jump in RPS. Now if you look at the bottom section in blue, this is the data that I wanted to show you guys. Both tests using two batteries in series almost doubled your rate of fire, but increasing the capacity and available amperage only increased it by a small margin with the 9.6s, and saw no increase with the 7.4s. Meaning, if the motor is getting enough amperage, you'll see no increase in RPS but the more voltage you send to it will increase the RPS. Well, up to a point. Up to what point? I don't know, and I sure as hell don't want to find out. Now, if you guys read what was in my gun, you notice that there was a MOSFET in here. Now, I had to take the MOSFET out for this test, as sending 19.2 volts through it will kill it. And any more voltage through this thing, and you will seriously risk arc welding your trigger contacts. Now this gun only had an M80 spring in it. I fully expected going to this test that I would end up stripping the piston and the gears due to premature engagement, and I actually bought a second set of gears and piston just in case I did. Surprisingly there wasn't any more wear than just some paint coming off. It's about 9 o'clock at night, and the front end of this thing has a tracer unit. So, I'm going to turn it towards the dark. Camera is currently set at 130 at 6400 ISO. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> 